In this video, we're going to take another look at the system's map. In the previous video, we examined station density using interstation distance. But in this video, we're going to take a closer look at the structure of the overall map. One of the first things you'll notice when looking at this map, or at least one of the first things I notice, is how you can travel between a lot of the outlying areas without having to go through the central business district. For example, you can travel between Glenfield and Granville just by following this branch of the T2 airport line and you don't have to say go into the central business district and come back out along this segment out to Granville. Now here I've pulled up a map of the Chicago Transit Authority subway and L system and you can see to get between outlying areas for example between if you wanted to go between Irving Park and Pulaski You'll have to go through the Chicago Central Business District. You have to take this blue line and then transfer at Clark to the green line, which will, and take it in this direction, which will take you to Pulaski. And you can't directly go between the two like you could in the Sydney Trains Network. And if you wanted to go between the two using public transit, You'd, ha you'd have to rely on the local bus system, which is going to have to share street traffic with cars, and the result's going to be much slower than the trains, which have independent right-of-way. So the Sydney Trains Network, you can get between a lot of these outlying areas without having to go through the central business district or without having to resort to taking the bus, whereas in the Chicago transit system, you cannot do that can see you'd either have to go through the central business district or you'd have to resort to the much slower bus to get between these outlying areas. And to get a better idea of what I mean, let's look at an analogy to car driving. Here's a map of the Los Angeles freeway network. Let's say you wanted to get between West LA and Linwood. One route you could take is you could go east on Interstate 10 and then south on 710 to Linwood. Alternatively, you could take 405 southeast and it'll hit 105 and go east to Linwood. But either way, there are multiple routes that you could take to exclusively travel on freeways between the two places and, and a lot of that you can see is because of this grid the Los Angeles area is gridded with freeways so you can pretty much get from most origins to destinations largely using the freeway network. Now for comparison's sake let's look at the Atlanta freeway network. And let's imagine for a moment that this Beltway Interstate 285 was not present. If you wanted to get from some suburb located on this stretch of Interstate 20 to say Marietta which is located off this stretch of Interstate 75, you're either going to have to go through the Central Business District and out on Interstate 75, or you're going to have to rely on a slower local road to take you between the two. And of course, this beltway helps, but let's say if it weren't there, then you'd either have to go through the Central Business District or rely on a slower local road. So this is very analogous to the situation here. In Sydney, because of the grid setup, there are not only multiple routes between any given pair of destinations, but you can travel between them without having to go through the central business district in most cases. Whereas in Chicago, you can't. You either have to go through the central business district or you have to resort to the slower buses between the two outlying areas. And just in case I haven't hammered this home enough, rapid transit networks, or at least effective ones, are designed to transport passengers through large portions of a city or urbanized area throughout most of the day, and not just from the outlying areas like here to the central business district and back to other outlying areas. 
So you can see the Sydney train system does a better job of that than does the Chicago rapid transit system. This is actually a rap, in fact, a rapid transit system in the United States. But you can see it largely functions to get passengers into the central business district and out of it. And effective rapid transit systems tend to be set up on a grid, like a lot of the Sydney Trains network is, or even multiple grids. You can see there, there are several grids here present in the network. And ones that aren't as effective as at transporting passengers around the various portions of the city are set up in this hub and spoke type of network, the way the Chicago transit system is. And this isn't really any different from how effective freeway systems are typically set up on grids and can transport drivers between any given pair of destinations without their having to travel on local roads. Whereas ones that aren't as effective, remember that this 285 beltway makes, makes the system more effective, but if let's say if this beltway weren't there, then people wanting to travel between outlying areas have to either move through the central business district or rely on slower local roads. So you can see the analogy between train systems and freeway networks is entirely appropriate with the local roads being more like the bus system being slower and subject to lights. So while a Sydney train system is more like the Los Angeles freeway system in that it's set up on a grid, this Chicago subway and L system is more like the Atlanta freeway system without the Beltway Interstate 285. Remember Interstate 285 actually helps you get between some of these outlying areas without having to go through the central business district. But the Chicago transit system doesn't have anything like that. They actually did propose a circle line at one point, which would have made a circle somewhere around this point of the system. So you could get between some of these areas without having to go through the central business district. But that circle line never materialized. So Chicago, the Chicago transit system is more set up like the Atlanta freeway system without the aid of a beltway. And this type of setup radiating out in spokes from a downtown hub is how commuter rail systems are actually typically set up. In fact, here's a map of the commuter rail system in the Chicago area called the Metro system. And you can see its map pretty much looks like a larger Chicago subway and L map with the lines just radiating much further out. See here's the CTA subway and an L train map, whereas here's the Metro commuter rail map, and you can just see the main difference is, is the size of the system, but they're both essentially set up the same way, designed to get people into and out of the central business district. Again, the CTA system here, trains are going to be more frequent, particularly outside of rush hours, whereas this system is going to be more designed to transport people to the core of Chicago during the morning commute hour and away from it during the evening commute hour. But they nevertheless possess some stark similarities in terms of structure. To give you yet another example, here's the GO train system map and this system serves as a commuter rail system for the Toronto area and all of its far out suburbs. And you can see how the system centered on Union Station and how every line pretty much radiates outward from Union Station in all directions except south because of the presence of Lake Ontario. And you can see this map pretty much looks like the CTA map only rotated clockwise 90 degrees. Here's the CTA map once again. Here's a GO Transit commuter rail map. And you can see here the lakes to the east rotate this 90 degrees clockwise. You pretty much get this map, which is a commuter map of a commuter rail system, specifically the one in Toronto with the lake to the south. In contrast, here's the 
subway map serving Toronto. And you can see there's there are more lines around the core of the city, not merely radiating outward from from downtown. This is Union Station. It's the same Union Station here. You can see rather than just being designed to get you in and out of Union Station, you can actually get around the whole inner area of Toronto fairly well using this subway and it's actually supplemented by streetcars that run through this portion of the town. But that's a subject for another another video. But you can see this there isn't quite a grid here, but uh you can see how a system structured like this would be more effective at transporting passengers to various parts of town than would a system like this which is more concerned with getting passengers into the core and out of it. So all of that having been said you can see how the Sydney Trains Network map is more of what you'd expect from that of a rapid transit system than what you'd expect from a commuter rail system.